topic given to me is my journey of the Siam. And I understand. I understand because I was one of the earliest one who had a Siam in private. Because Dr. Anand is there, he will say that was a Siam in Siam. At that time, there was already a Siam in a so-and-so hospital. So I'll say probably in private. Mine was the first Siam and that's the reason I've been asked to talk on my journey of Siam. As I said, when I was coming from America, every year I used to go and attend the meetings and I realized that Siam has become a part and partial of the orthopedic arm of Inter. While here we were using only the X-ray machines. So while coming back, I contacted the X-ray manufacturer, Kanti Gada, and I asked him that I want to have a Siam. So he told me that if you give me one lakh of rupee, and at that time, one lakh of rupee was a big, big, big amount. I'm talking about 90s, early 90s. Then if I can make it, I charge you whatever it costs. If I can't make it, your one lakh is gone. Okay, I said yes. And he made the first Siam, which I think it was being used by me for years together. He went on updating it. And that is the way in which I felt that the CM was introduced and he must have shown this CM to innumerable people. So whatever he gave me, almost at the cost, he collected back by showing it to the other future uh, investors. And he had that again and again. And he updated it frequently as the more and more things which went on coming. And so I felt that that CM, it became a part in partial. And today I feel at the end of the talk, I am going to say that you should have two CRMs and never a one CRM. So I think this is how I started having a CRM, and that is how the surgery started with CRM. Now, the CRM which is being used, the hip ankle axis with the CRM, is the one which you'll have to do it again and again. And I feel that that is the one which is most important that unless and until when you are doing a proximal femur, uh, sorry, proximal TBR, distal femur, HTO, and even a TKR, you need the axis. So that is the way we commonly do it is with the quadri wire. So we put the quadri wire, it has to be put onto the center of the head. It has to be put the center of the head. And it has to put on the center of the knee. And it has to come to the center of the ankle. Now what happens at times is quadri wire, even if we try to straighten it out, it gets bent and it is difficult to get a straight quadri wire all the time. So you may err a little onto that. And that's the reason why I feel a rod is far more important what we use it conventionally. We use the rod for a TKR. That is the one which I use it. I got this made done with this rod which is connected and it becomes like it is exactly like a TKR rod. So the same thing, this is the way you put in the rod it has to be centered around the CM onto the head. It has to come onto the center of the tibia and it has to come into the center of the ankle. Then only you know the axis is all right. So every time you operate proximal uh, tibia, distal femur and STO, which is one absolutely mandatory to do this axis. We don't do it so many times and we end up into the proximal tibias or a distal femur with the axis deviation. And it has been shown that proximal tibia, if you have not been able to realign the joint anatomically, it is less important than allowing the axis correction to be done. So do not compromise on the axis. If the articular surface is shattered, you may have to compromise on the articular cartilage reconstruction. But the axis correction, if it is there, then still you will get a much better result. So the CM can be used very well for this axis correction. Now into this tibia vara, which is there. If you have this tibia vara, you can see the axis is going through the lower end. And in this situation, if you have to do the high tibial osteotomy, you will have to understand that you are doing the whole thing perfectly well. Then, then only you will be able to get the high tibial done. Now, as it is here, you can see this is the one surgeon has done the proximal tibia. And you can see he has given so much of a valgus, 
so that the axis is passing through the outer end. So even if whatever is done anatomically, he has done a good job, this is going to give way and this is going to give you a problem very soon. So this axis, you must see that it is done properly. Now here it is, this is my own case, before I realized the axis correction. You know, this is earlier when we used to take a central incision, but I have ended up into a virus. This knee, even if articular surface has been well done, this is the one which is going to give trouble. So if at all you end up into virus, you have not checked it up on the table, on the CM, whether your axis is correct or no. Even if you find it out, go down after three, four, six months and do this correction of the axis, because this is the one which is most important there. And as you can see it over here, this is the one which has been revision, which is done and the perfect axis correction is done. So even if the articular surface, you may not be able to reconstruct it properly, but if the axis correction is done, this is the one which will last for a long time and the patient will have a symptom-free lag for a long time. Now here it is when we're doing the uh, high tibial osteotomy. This is the one which we're doing the high tibial osteotomy. The axis is going on the medial side. Now here it is, this is before the opening of the osteotomy. This is the one you can see the axis is going on the medial side. Once you start opening, the axis slowly shifts onto the lateral side. And then once it shifts onto the lateral side, you will see it on the lateral spike there, and then it is the way you live. This is, can be monitored beautifully on the table with this rod. This is the rod I find is very important. We all must get it done by our common manufacturer, Indian manufacturer, it doesn't cost much. So I think watery wire is an inferior substitute to find out the axis. Probably this rod is a much better substitute. Now the the third part of the dry talk was, if the CM comes up, how do you do the interlocking which you have done? Now in 1994, interlocking tibia nailing without image intensifier, I had written this article in JBJS. This was published in JBJS. The basics was this is, when there is no CM, I had introduced this interlocking nail in India, as all of you know, with the help of an X-ray machine. The same thing, you'll have to go back. If you have only one CR and it comes out in the nursing home and if it is halfway through, you have not been able to do the digital locking, then how do you proceed? This is what am I supposed to be talking about. Now, first and the foremost, you adjust the X-ray machine the way we do the CR. If it is an oblique hole, you go on moving the tube into the way where it becomes round. This is the one which is done also for the CR and same thing has to be done for the X-ray. Same thing if it is an oval one, it has to be done there. So same thing, all these shapes have to be ultimately made round. So once the once it has been made round on the X-ray machine, now you can proceed. So what is being done is take another X, another C, uh, nail of the same size as you have used it in the patient. Generally, there is always a same size of a machine, the nail may be there. It, that doesn't have to be 8 millimeter, even it can be 9 millimeter, but the same length. And more, all of them have the equal holes which have been situated. So once it is there, once you are done, now in the CM you make this line, so that you will be there exactly at the same spot. Now having done that, put the guide wire. You put the guide wire and take an X-ray machine. Once you've taken the X-ray machine, you've taken the picture, now you know here is the hole, and your, your guide wire is here, so you'll have to go almost here. So this is 10 millimeter nail, so this is 5 millimeter, and this is another 2, so 7 millimeter, you'll have to go onto the, onto the lateral side. And here you can measure it, that you are slightly distally, as you can see, this is the hole. So you go slightly more proximally, and onto the lateral side, 7 millimeter, then you will be able to hit it. So once you are done there, this is the hole which you, you have done. And even if you made a wrong hole, which is overlapping, you will be able to see this hole inside in the nail. And then you may get an oblique hole like this. But this doesn't matter at all. This will still hold the screw properly well, and you will be able to do the interlocking. So with the X-ray machine itself, you will be able to do the interlocking digitally. And two holes which you will be able to fix it up with this, which is perfectly well. So in conclusion, CM 
learn yourself how it works so that if the problem you can handle it most of the time as you know into the hospitals the rmos have to find out how exactly the cm works because the cm technician into the bigger hospital is in a great demand because there are three surgery four surgeries are going on and there are only two cm technicians so he goes on jumping from one place to other place so as an rmo i remember that every rmo had to learn how to handle a cm now most orthopods have the space i am talking outside mumbai mumbai we have no space at all so those who have outside mumbai who have a space should have two cms one as a standby or two at a time in ap and lateral views you will be able to use it because the cost of the cm now is not going to be so significant as it is used to be in past in today's economics because 100% of the trauma surgery needs a cm and most others ortho procedures 70 80% of the time you need a cm so i feel it is time you start having two cms into the areas in which you have enough space and if no money and no issue is there about money as for problem buy the best available cm maybe it is four to five times the cost of the cheapest cm but then it will have a best possible image and you will have a radiation control there so today i think the orthopedic surgeons after he has settled down and he has earned his money i am sure instead of instead of buying a mercedes benz he should invest into the cm and get the best cm and you will know the or the the pleasure of operating with the best cm is something which is unique i'll explain to you i was i was appointed into the reliance hospital and unfortunately the reliance hospital had the worst possible cms which were purchased at time so i introduced there and i said this is the one into the nursing home i had a better cm in patia we have a better cm so fortunately they have now imported a best possible cm and we know that all the be orthopedic surgeons are extremely happy so do not compromise on the quality of a cm because that is where we spend our whole life with the cm and that is what is going to give us the pleasure thank you very much Thank you.